What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the color picker tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're talking all about the color picker tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Now this tool is often called the eyedropper tool because that's what it's called in the Adobe programs, but in Affinity we call it the color picker tool. And it's a pretty straightforward and simple tool, but let's go ahead and take a look and just kind of learn the ins and outs of it today. Okay, so back here in Affinity Photo, we are going to go ahead and look at this color picker tool. But first we're actually going to use the move tool, which we talked about last time. So let's just tap on that. And the reason this is important is because when we use the color picker tool, we're going to have the option to apply the color to something. So let's say that we want to use the color picker tool to change the color of this text. So I'm just going to use the move tool to select this text. Then it's really important to open up the color panel on the right and to make sure that you have your foreground color in front and that's the color on the left. So we want that so that we actually are changing the color of the text. So that's the black one there. So then let's tap on the color picker tool which is the third one down and it just looks like a little eyedropper. So you'll hear this called the eyedropper tool because that's really common in other programs. And when we get this tool, the main function is when we click and drag around on the screen, we're going to be able to pick up any color that we have on the screen. So say I want the white of this porpoise's belly, I could get that. Say I want this kind of jewelish blue from the waves, I can go ahead and I can get that. And when I let go, it's going to apply this to that text that I had selected. So that's how the color picker tool works. The reason that it applied to the text right there is because I have it on auto apply down here in this bottom menu. So if I undo that with a two finger tap and I turn off auto apply, then I can drag around and I can select another color. Let's just say this gray color here and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, nothing happens because the auto apply is turned off. So if we come over here and look at this, we're going to see that it's still black. So even though if we look in the layers studio, we can see that we are selected on this text. It didn't change it because auto apply is turned off. So where'd the color go? Well, the color is now here in the eyedropper holder here in the color studio. And we'll talk more about this, of course, when we get to the studios, but you kind of need to know that. And then if we want to apply it, we just need to tap on that circle and then it will apply it. So that's kind of where we can store it and we can keep that around and use it for anything that we want. Let me go ahead and undo that again. And it's good to note here that there's another eyedropper right here in the color studio next to that and we can click that, but we have to click and hold on it and then we can drag out and then we can select something and it will pop in there. So that's the auto apply. Let's go ahead and turn that back on so it's easy for us to see what's happening next. Next we have the radius. So here it says point one by one. So currently it's selecting only a single pixel from all of the pixels in the image, but we can change that to an average of various amounts. So let's just go ahead and do like an average of 17 by 17 here. And now when I drag across the screen, it's going to select from an area rather than a single point. So you can see I can no longer see the single point that I'm going to select from it's going to select from a square of 17 by 17 pixels. So let's just go right here. And you can see we get kind of this lightish blue color, which is an average of the other colors. So that's the radius. Next, we have the source, which is set to global currently, but we can also select current layer. Now remember, my current layer is the text. And so if I'm on current layer and I try and drag over this, I'm not actually going to pick up any of this color because there isn't a color there to pick up from. The only thing on that layer is just blank. And so if I come over here and I actually pick up some of my black because I'm doing an average, it's actually going to sample that into a gray color. Now in this case, it wouldn't make any sense to use current layer because the only thing on this layer is the text, right? And so if I have auto apply selected and current layer in this case, it's just going to change the thing that it's already selecting. So that's kind of silly. So let's go back and let's change this to global. And then let's go ahead and let's get on to one of our other layers. Let's go ahead and let's select the dynamite here. And now if we have auto apply on and we are going to select this, Let's go in and let's drag across and let's make this blue. And you can see that it actually turns that whole layer blue. So this is something good to note is that if you have a pixel layer like an image selected, it's just going to apply a fill to that entire layer. And that's not going to be useful most of the time. So you just want to be careful about what layer you're selected on and what your settings are. Okay, so that's the whole color picker tool there. Just remember you can select it from there or you can use this one over here in the color studio. But that one doesn't have all of the settings that the actual tool does. So that's basically the difference there. All right, I hope you've enjoyed learning all about the color picker tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down in the comment section below. I love to hear from you. 
And don't forget that you can check out my courses, including a couple of courses that I've made all about Affinity Photo and how to use the different tools on specific types of projects. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.